On this episode, we showcase the journey of Perfect Corp, a leader in artificial intelligence and augmented reality virtual try-on solutions for beauty and fashion. Hear about how they leverage AWS and generative AI to enhance accuracy and personalization across their portfolio, driving innovation and superior customer experiences at scale while reducing costs and ensuring security. Well, I'm excited to welcome Wayne Liao, President and Chief Growth Officer and Co-Founder of Perfect Corp. Wayne, thanks so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to share our experience. And from AWS, we have Danny Wang, Business Development Manager. Danny, great to have you here. Yeah, good to be here. Thank you. And also from AWS, we have Roger Wang, our Solutions Architect. Roger, thank you also for being here today. Thank you, Sarah. So Wayne, for our international audience, can you tell us a little bit about Perfect Corp? Yeah, so Perfect Corp is a technology company. Basically, we are using AI and AR uh, augmented reality, so as our base. But the interesting thing here is our application is mainly to the beauty and fashion industry. So we cover the technology from virtual try-on, so you can virtually try the makeup, all the way to uh, skin analysis. Of course, we're using AI deep learning to understand your skin, and then, uh, you know, to understand your skin tone and the cases. And then we do hair. We do a virtual try on, on uh, accessory. So we cover lots of different aspects of the fashion and the beauty industry. Yeah, so um, 10 years in the business, global. So uh, we, are, we are in the many different countries. We are working with lots of uh, big brand globally. Fantastic. And I can imagine that in the beauty industry, that perfection is super important, isn't it, to to get the tones right, to get those recommendations right for your customers. Yeah, yes, absolutely. So that's why our uh, company's name is Perfect. So yeah. you have to be precise. You know, when you talk about beauty, you have to be perfect. So can you tell us a little bit about the technology estate that you had? What were you trying to do with AWS in this case? Yeah, so uh, we collaborate with the AWS and also using AWS as a service in many different ways. Mainly, I would say in the three very important parts. The first one is really the platform architecture, the infrastructure. Because uh, as I said, we are a global company. Uh, we operate uh, 24-7. You know, because of global, somewhere, sometime, it's always somebody using our service. So that's why stability is very important. Also, we are working with uh, more than 650 brands globally. So that's why you can see the high demand. And then also, uh, we are constantly growing. So scalability is uh, super important. So that's why working with AWS as a platform infrastructure, that's super important. And also, as I said, because we are using AI technology. So, you know, AI is a constant evolving, very fast. And then our customer, you know, sometimes they just come with some idea, we de develop some new AI application. So that's why we require very dynamic and the versatile infrastructure in the AI development specifically. So we rely heavily on the deep learning technology. And right now, you know, generative AI, the large language models training, that one is super, super important. So, and then the last but not least is, uh, as I said, we work on the 60, 650 brand globally across, uh, can be like 80 different country. So you can imagine the complexity of a compliance and the security. So that's why uh, we need to work with the company to comply their local data protection, regulation, and all kinds of uh, uh, compliance. So that's why, so like a GDPR. So that's why, you know, working with AWS is really offering us a service to the global customer's uh, uh, safety and security side. Fantastic. And Danny, those key themes around infrastructure, advanced technologies and access to the latest technology as well as the grounding and security resonates, I'm sure, with you in terms of the work that you do with customers all the time. Yeah, absolutely. So I think uh, from day one, Perfect set the scale at the global scale for their application. So I think for uh, scaling is a really important thing for them. So at the beginning, about like 2016, you know, they have a huge demand for CPU. But at that time, they didn't, we didn't introduce the auto scaling group 
for them at the beginning. But when their business is expanding really huge from all around the world, then we introduce the auto scaling group for them to expand the usage of the CPU. And later on, they have the huge demand for GPU as well because, you know, Gen AI is expanding in their application as well. So we also add the GPU at the auto scaling group for them to control the usage and the performance and also the cost for them to have a better control for that. Mm, absolutely. And Roger, maybe you can get into some of the architectural patterns for this latest use of generative AI and deep learning in providing that kind of virtual try-on capabilities. Yeah, for sure. And one thing I would like to also highlight is uh, Perfect not only has the app for the consumer side, they also have the control plan and all the infrastructure and management tools for their clients on the business side as well. So imagine as having to figure out like how can we enable their customers on the, the business side of things. Uh, so they also do a lot of like tracking possibilities and you can imagine all the Good stuff that a SaaS company like the work with AWS, like we, we offer them a lot of like multi-tenant and consultation about how they should design their product and mirroring what AWS has done in the past. Um, specifically on the generative AI side, because they are the pioneers on the, <laughs> in the AI and beauty AI space. They are, they also leverage our GPU, uh, resources a lot. So you can imagine like back in the days, 2015, uh, starting from 2015 to maybe 20, uh, 23 is it's more like a CPU in intensive kind of workload. But as the generative AI era, as we enter into the generative AI era, they kind of starting having to balance between how I'm going to do some of the generative, uh, like create, creative and generation on the server side a little bit more rather than having all the requests having to deal with on the client side. So you can imagine like there are some architectural balances that need to kind of have a trade-off. What if the, the picture that the customer generate, um, is not appropriate? <laughs> they have to implement a layer on top of like the existing platform and then having more security and safeguards and guard, guard duty kind of, uh, security checks on top of each other. So that's how we have been helping them and then involve the entire technology side and then make change along the way as they expand into more countries. Mm -hmm. That flexibility, you mentioned that, Wayne, and versatility of the kinds of the and uh, optionality that you have in terms of working so important for uh, meeting the demand of your global customers. Is that right? Yes, yes, yes. And then also, so talk about uh, the, I will say the scale. I want to add some number to make, make sure the customer, uh, the audience here can have uh, some idea about when we talk about the sheer amount at the scale, what's the scale? So basically, even, you know, I keep on getting customer. However, the thing is that when I, even when I see this number, I get a little bit shocked. Wow, it's a lot. So let me share with you. We are using the uh, Amazon's uh, EMR. Okay, so we uh, EMR, the Elastic uh, Map Reduce uh, Service. So we process 2.5 billion, that's B, 2.5 billion consumer event and 200 million API inquiry per day. So you can see that uh, your service actually provides us a safeguard and the infrastructure to process so many, so many requests per day. And also, it's dynamic because sometimes, you know, if something we launch some new product, the demand can surge like immediately, just surge it. Or the customer launches, we have some partner that launches some new service. So that's why uh, to be versatile and dynamic and reliable is really, really important. So based on this number, we are using billion or million as a unit. Mm, amazing. And Danny, that elasticity so important in the value proposition of what we're providing. Can you talk a little bit about uh, some of the capabilities there and, and the approach for using serverless, et cetera, that we were able to bring? Right. So I want to tell a story uh, regarding the EMR that Wayne just mentioned. That is a good practice for working backward, like in Amazon uh, algorithm. So that uh, one thing is that we are discussing with Perfect that how to optimize the user interface and the user experience at that time. 
and that uh, we want to work in backward. How can we know what is really happening on the app and what is really a uh, customer that end user is doing with our apps so that we are starting to collect the end user click stream so that we collected all these events and put it in the EMR. So you can imagine that there's over 60 million of active users at that time for the, for the apps and that we can analyze all these event logs in the EMR. So including which listing, put in which location, and which of the color is more popular being clicked, and what is the relation between the clicking, so that we can also uh, produce the uh, report for that, what is the really important location, or what the color, what is the brand that is popular to the end user. So this is how we use the EMR so that we can analyze all these things. Mm, fantastic, Wayne. That, those insights that you're able to then garner for pr- your your customers around their end customers' usage of the system is probably a differentiator for you. Is that right? Yes, yes, absolutely. Because, uh, you know, when Danny talk about this uh, analytic data, that's one of our strengths because we provide intelligence. Okay, we not just let the customer blindly try their uh, the, the makeup because uh, we actually, we understand where, how, and what color they are trying. So we analyze it, we provide this intelligence back to, so we have a B2B and B2C business. For the B2B, we provide this intelligence back to the brand. So brand is a truly a very valuable uh, insight because they know what what and where and how this uh, customer try their product or even uh, they have a skin concern. So they know what kind of skin concern uh, they th- their customer is uh, really focused on. And on the B2C side, of course, you know, it's, uh, with a sheer amount of data, we need to analyze the log, and sometimes maybe something happens, so we can quickly go back to a log and check. So um, the the EMRs, uh, the capability to provide provide us also all this intelligent data and the analytical, uh, you know, this uh, uh, the the methodology is very very important, super critical to us. Mm, absolutely. And Roger, I want to go back to something that Wayne had mentioned in the beginning around security and compliance and some of that built in capabilities that we have. Do you want to speak to that a little bit about how we helped? Yeah, for sure. So I think Perfect uh, do a lot of things to protect their customers and that reflect on the architectural choices they made. In fact, the the, the product skill from the beauty brands are actually trained in, in-house and then, but all the renderings are happening on the client side. So they don't collect all the sensitive data in terms of your skin and, and then all the different like colors and stuff like that, but also because they need to be very, very precise. So you can imagine like uh, they, as they expand into different countries and then there are different regulatory uh, compliance, uh, they, they need to be, uh, uh, to be compliant with. So how to balance between what are the data that I need to collect versus like what are the data that I need to protect and then refine my uh, services, et cetera, et cetera. So they leverage a lot of like security, uh, services on the front end side. They use, um, the WAF to, to make sure that there's no like diff, uh, different, like, uh, unnecessary, uh, attacks that are hitting their, their platform. And also they use a lot of, uh, like God duty to making sure that all the traffics are, is there any patterns and then using masses to, to figure out uh, any columns that are, that are might be, uh, sensitive data. They need to be doing maskings. And then also, uh, how can they do those kind of on-device machine learning and then infer the anonymous traffic without having to know uh, what what IP address this customer is coming from, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. because of all those uh, very rigid security compliance uh, requirements, um, recently we've been working with them to say, a, how can you do this on your regular basis? So we help them introduce some security incidents event management platform using open search. And then help their backend and engineering team to adopt those kind of solutions, like right to use, like immediately uh, launch, uh, that they can use immediately, um, not having to put together all themselves. Right, right. When we often talk in this um, podcast about experimentation and failure, and that kind of speaks to some of that, like being resilient uh, and building in the capacity and capabilities for your system to evolve over time. But uh, was there anything particular that you would um, 
point out or think of that it was an obstacle you had to overcome uh, during the development of this these capabilities for your end customers? The what Roger said actually is super important because of data privacy. And then the so thanks Roger actually explained this. Uh, you know we rendering in the client side. So that one we constantly get asked because we are taking the face. So that can be very sensitive. But every time we get into the contract and everything, the access to show them the architecture. So they say, how can you not get my data, you know, my customer's data, but still rendering? I said, let me show it to you. Okay. So when we, whenever we show this architecture to them, we pass their, the, the security assessment. So that one's super important because for us, you know, protect the data, especially we are dealing with the face. So that's super important. And also, second thing is, uh, it's a really, um, it's availability. So, uh, you know, as, uh, uh, Danny just says, when we started, it's primary AR. Okay. So we do lots of, um, uh, the CPU and then later we transfer into the GPU because it's AI. So this, uh, uh, transition. So the availability is uh, super important. So we are very happy, uh, you know, certain currently we can uh, achieve like a 99.99%. Uh, of a service availability because uh, the customer doesn't really matter. They they don't care about if you are transition doing architecture re- rendering or whatever. They only need something is available when they need. Right. It. So that's why the smooth transition it was an obstacle because we have a concern. It's, okay, what happened if we transfer we transfer something and transition to something and then the service if they have a interruption or something, our customer won't be happy. But actually, it doesn't happen. So. That's why I guess uh, it's a perfect uh, collaboration with uh, the AWS team. So make all these uh, transition very smooth. So that's why it's uh, something fundamental, you know, security, mm-hmm. privacy, and then provide the customer peace of mind. That's uh, something we really care about. And then we are happy AWS team actually help us to get through this uh, the obstacle. Fantastic. You know, um, I know this is an ongoing effort, but maybe you can give us a sense of where we are in terms of the um, infusing these Gen AI and deep learning capabilities into the product and um, where we are in terms of going to production? Yeah, so uh, great question because uh, we are in the era of uh, generative AI. And then uh, we are also still learning because generative AI um, is a little bit different from, I always call it classic AI, right? So you train a model, when the model is uh, stable, you put into the your production, but generate AI is to generate something in the fly. So that's why we can see if, uh, especially, you know, if we get some popular feature coming out, suddenly that, uh, you know, we get lots of searches. So that's why how to, and then also because of from our B2B customer or even B2C customer, sometimes we set a cap, you know, on the business reason. So we cannot just limit it and just do unlimited access. So that's why how, uh, uh, like moving to the future is uh, something we really need to Focus on and stuff is a, uh, yeah, the, of course, the scalability. And also this uh, scalability become, ca- can be, uh, into a second. Okay. In couple of seconds, you may need to help us to increase a hundred millions, uh, uh, capacity, something like that. And also, uh, why we hit the cap? Do we have any tolerance or any uh, margin for, to continue the service without the interruption? So I guess uh, that's uh, something. More like a new because of a uh, generate the development of a generative AI and then create some new, uh, challenge for us. But again, that's a challenge turned into opportunity. So I'll say, um, uh, you know, beside everything, we will just, uh, business as usual, but for generative AI, uh, the, this availability and then the, in the very short period of time, how can we control this, uh, uh, you know, this, uh, the, the, the server, the service assessment and then also maintain the reliability. I love that notion of turning the challenge into opportunity. And Danny, that's something we see with a lot of our customers, isn't it? Um, in the experimentation with generative AI, but doing that in a safe and controlled manner so that they can make sure that they maintain that high availability and quality for their customers. Is that right? Yeah, of course. And I think uh, Perfect Core is a really good example for a Taiwanese company that always accept the challenge and explore to a different market. So, for example, at the beginning, they are having a B2B uh, business for a cosmetic brand. 
And later on, they have switched to the B2C market for the apps, which you can download from the iOS or Android system. And from now on, they start to try the generative AI solution. And also they are uh, stepping into the uh, medical industry right now. Yeah, so for uh, these GPU usage, then we need to see the problem in more detail and in more accuracy. For example, they have the new apps called the Skincare Pro, and they have the Reshape Simulator. This kind of application is doing in the medical industry. So that, for example, like Skincare Pro, we analyze more than uh, 10 different kinds of skin problems so that we need to see the problem in detail and accuracy. For example, we cannot, we can, we, we cannot mix up the difference between the pimple and the mole because that's a totally different thing. So that we need to analyze the skin problem in more detail. And for example, when the reshape simulator, we need to show what is the difference before and after the, the surgery from the doctor. So that, you know, these kind of application from Gen AI is really, is a really good thing that we can see that is a, application produced by Perfect Corp. And we see that there is more opportunity coming in the future. So that's really interesting. Tell us a little bit more about uh, these two products, Wayne. Yeah. So Danny, actually, I have a good news for you. While you are talking about the skincare pro, you said 10 concerns. Actually, we already improved uh, getting to 14 different concerns. You can see how fast it is. And also, uh, so basically, skincare pro is a very uh, easy to use tool. It's a software tool. So the dermatologist or aesthetician, you can download and put into your iPad. No, you know, complex, uh, you know, installation. You just, uh, just like an app and you can start doing that. So just uh, scan the faces and then the, we will tell you like the 14 different concern, the common concern from your customer or your client. So for example, uh, the surveillance of their wrinkle, their pore, or if they have redness. So we'll graphically show on your faces. And then we we'll give you a numerical number so you can see how your skin compared to other people. So that's why, um, it sounds pretty simple, but actually it's not. It takes us, uh, uh, years of uh, doing the deep learning and now we offer it. And then also another one, which we just uh, launched, we call the aesthetic simulator. Basically that one is for plastic surgeon. Okay. So, uh, when the most of customer, what happened to them? The, the problem, the pain point is when they go into a, a doctor, plastic surgeon, they want to do something. They want to do reshape. However, what happened is, uh, they are wondering about what will happen. What will look like? What will look like after the surgery? So, uh, usually at this moment is, uh, they show you some photos of before and after, but it's other people's faces. It's not your faces. So what we are doing here is we are using your faces. Of course, goes through, uh, a complicated learning, the AI learning, deep learning process, and also generative AI because we need to create. We need to create based on what we learn, what will happen to you. So your doctor said, okay, so you probably need to do a chin lifting. Okay. And then by doing this uh, surgery, you'll get 70% improvement on your chin. 70%. What does that mean? So, but we graphically show you what that 70% improvement means. Oh, you can say, oh, okay. So I understand. So actually that solves a very fundamental problem where is that we empower the customer. Because when customers come to the, the doctor office, they are always vulnerable because they are facing something unknown. So that's why with our, uh, the new AI uh, development, we get into the medical field, which uh, Danny just talking about. And also, you know, going to medical field, we need more data security and privacy protection. So that's why, again, go back to the AWS, provide us this environment. Mm, yeah, so much exciting opportunity for expansive use of, of these technologies. Um, well, Wayne, Danny, and Roger, thank you so much for being here and sharing your story with us. And I'll, I'll just, uh, ask us to end on maybe some reflections that you've had in the course of this work that you've done that you would share with our customers. I'll start with you, Roger. Yeah, for sure. I think the, the, we mentioned this a little bit, uh, during the course of this conversation, like having the, the opening mindset and then having uh, the resiliency in terms of like open to what the market is telling you and then use AWS technology to kind of put together something really quick and then uh, get the feedback and then work with us. I think we really appreciate the relationship between uh, the Perfect Corbin and our account team. Like they always tell us what they want to do. 
And then we get the feedback. We brainstorm what's the best uh, solution for them. And then they taste the market. And then we go from there and then iterate. And that's kind of like working backward. And they, they very much adopt our leadership principles as well. So I'm feeling like I'm working with <laughs> my AWS coworkers from the other company. So uh, I really appreciate that. Nice. Danny, how about you? Yeah, so I think working with Perfect Core, we are not uh, only the relationship between the vendor and the customer. We are also like a real partnership w- between us. Because, for example, like uh, we uh, arrange Perfect Core to have a speech and at a booth in Taiwan for the retail forum so that we can connect more different retail customers with a Perfect Core. So they, they, can, they can also expand their market no matter in their original industry or the extra industry they want to explore in the future. So I think that is also we are helping and also we are cooperating with uh, Perfect Corp. Wonderful. Wayne, I'll give you the final words, final reflections. So we are in the technology world and then people, the market, the customer, our shareholder expect us to innovate it. So that's why we always run and we run fast. But the thing here is, as Danny said, what we are running, you know, we need to have a somebody to partner. You need to have a people to set up the, the table to provide you the, the water. So you won't de- dehydrate, right? So you have a water here. So that's why I said running, running fast and then jumping, jumping higher. But you always need to find a good partner to help you to put the safety nets or put the table to provide you the water. So that's why you can have a peace of mind. You can run fast. You can jump high. So that's why in this uh, reflection, I see the um, getting uh, AWS and Amazon in general in our, as our partner is to really help us. It's not only a partnership, it's basically an ecosystem. So we grow, we, we move, and then you help us to grow. So that's my reflection. We are very happy, and then uh, we're looking forward to continue explore the uncharted territory of a generative AI and turn all this uh, obstacle and challenge into the opportunity. Fantastic. I love the metaphor of a long distance race and, and really looking at uh, that um, stamina that you have to continue to invent on behalf of your customers. So thank you so much, Wayne, for being here today. Danny, Roger, again, um, wonderful to catch up with you. Thank Welcome. You. Thank you. Thank you.